Hi, this is Kevin Inoue with Fight Designer LLC. I don't update this one as often, those of you who know about my PewTube channel. Uh, I've been trying to do pretty much weekly updates over there, so if you're interested in what kind of new props I've got at Fight Designer LLC that are firearms related, by all means go and subscribe, follow the link below to get to PewTube. You can always just go to tinyurl.com slash PewTube. You can subscribe, there's playlists there, you can look through stuff like that. Um, so for the most part, what still stays over here at Fight Designer LLC is uh, basically anything else that isn't guns. Um, so uh, just a quick update on on that. Um, you know, it's it's been a, a good good year. Um, I'm approaching the end of my first year here in Cleveland. I've been working with uh, Karamu House pretty much that whole time. Um, they they contacted me. They were the first company outside of the campus I'm working for that contacted me to help with uh, fences. Um, and since then, I've done the, the two Tennessee Williams shorts that they did as well. And I, uh, Aida is now opening, or now has opened, uh, the, the musical, not the opera. So the, the Elton John musical Aida is now open at Caramu. And that's got some of my swords, uh, aluminum swords, and fight choreography, and a, a knife stabbing. Um, some good stuff. Uh, so if you're interested, you can try and check that out if you are local. Um, but the main thing I want to talk about today... Oh, and... Uh, Gotta give a shout out to Dobama as well. They brought me in for a few things. Um, I'll also be working with Cleveland Playhouse next fall. I've done so, a couple little things for them, just you know, a slap here, there kind of stuff. Um, but I'm looking forward to getting to, to do a real sword fight with them next fall on uh, Into the Breaches. Um, and I've been working, of course, with Case Western Reserve University uh, on a lot of their shows as well. Um, so, update over. Uh, plus, I'm in this kind of like tight frame right now because my kit lens just died and I had to order a new one. Um, uh, because, that's the other update, I'm working on my second book, uh, for those of you who don't know. Um, so I am the author of the Theatrical Firearms Handbook, which is now partway through its second print run. I don't know if it will go into a third sometime soon or not. Um, but it's been a successful book, published in 2014 with Focal Press. Uh, and uh, I think it's been useful, which is good. That's the feedback I keep getting is that people are finding it useful. Uh, as well as entertaining. So uh, Focal Press approached me wanting to, to see what else you got. Um, and in that category of what else does the industry really need? Because they didn't need just another stage combat textbook. Um, so what I came up with and proposed to them a year and a half ago, two years ago, whatever, uh, was something specifically on fights for camera. So catering to the indie film market. Um, and I am now a little behind contract on that, so I'm trying madly to finish that. There'll be some accompanying video. Uh, that I still got to work on this summer, um, and I'm I'm more than halfway through by word count, but it's gonna, yeah, that's my main project this summer. Let me put it that way. Um, but I still dabble in prop stuff because that makes me happy. That is my happy place to go and make a bunch of sawdust and play with stuff. So um, I want to talk about axes today. Is my main thing. I've got an axe to grind. Um, hey hey hey. Uh, actually, most of the one I'm grinding is the wood, not the metal. So. Um, I enjoy playing with axes. There's a lot of great choreography you can do. When I do workshops, uh, I tend to use these cold steel trainers just because they're cheap and <laughs> easy to get. Uh, and they can do pirate boarding axe, they can do uh, tomahawk and knife. Uh, there's just all, so many choreographic possibilities with an axe. You can, you can choke up on it. Um, you can you know, use the, the haft. Um, you can slide down here and, and use it as a, as a hafted weapon. You've got a back spike. You got a flat, you've got an edge, you got a spike, all sorts of good stuff. You can stop thrusts. My heavy bag's right there. All right. Um, but these are not the best props. You know, you can paint them, but they're still going to look kind of chintzy. Um, and the steel ones that these are made to be trainers for are a little bit too dangerous. You know, a hafted weapon, even if you blunt it, it's got impact. That's kind of the whole point. Plus, that's the point. Um, and it'll go through things, whether you want it to or not. So while I have a number of steel axes, including a, a lovely steel boarding axe, they're really freaking heavy. Um, and that makes me a little worried about safety, and I'm not sure I'd want to use them for any real serious combat. So, um, you know, I tried using a spare haft from one of the real ones of these to make an aluminum one a while back. I'm not really happy with the shape I came up with. Frankly, I think that's a little, a little fantasy-y. Uh, nor do I like the composite handle, the look of it. I mean, I, I like that they can not get chewed up when used against swords, but um, aesthetically, I'm not too happy with this. You know, I've used it a few times, it works, whatever. Um, but 
In retrospect, I might have done a slightly different sh uh, shape to this. I think it was dictated as much by the scrap of aluminum that I was able to get on eBay or something as it was by, uh, by any real design decisions. Um, so I've been looking for other options there. And uh, a couple routes that I've taken lately. One, I discovered a new company, or a couple of companies, making a new type of rubber training tomahawk. So, uh, so this is kind of what it looks like um, when you when you order it, and uh, then I, you know, wanted to find a steel copy, so I found some steel copies, and what I found in steel, um, we got like a little sog trick. I'm sure this is a ripoff and not a real sog. I would be very surprised if this is at all authentic, um, and the scabbard is kind of crap because that pokes right through. But um, uh, and I need to dull this down. Still, I have not yet. I think ideally I'd have a, a hero one that's sharp, and then a blunted steel, and then uh, you know an aluminum and a rubber for talking fantasy. Um, so as you can see, it has a little bit of topography here. It's the same basic shape, but it's got these cutouts. It's got kind of a little uh, inset there, a weird little skull and crossbonesy kind of thing there, um, and a mix of blackened and steel um, finish on there. So uh, what I did was I set out to make my rubber look more like their steel because my goal is to be able to have a stunt double for the prop. So I did a little bit of dremeling out. It's not perfect, it's not gonna hold up in close up, but you don't use the rubber for close up, you use the steel for close up. So when you're gonna see it up close, it'll look real because it'll be the real one, which has crappy lighting up there. Yeah. And then when it's moving quickly through space, it'll be the rubber one. Because you really can't tell as it's going at all quickly, which one of these is sharp steel and which one's rubber, right? You can't tell. Um, so a couple things that I tried out here, in addition to a little bit of uh, carving and dremeling, I didn't exactly match the shape, but I came close enough, I think. Um, but yeah, in addition to the carving and dremeling, um, I'm also trying out a new a new finish here, which is uh, you know, here I'll, I'll get some for you, uh, rub and buff. That's what it's called. Um, and so the rub and buff uh, comes in a variety of colors. You know, I, I think I got a multi pack, so I have like the silver and the gold and some black. Um, you know, and there was there was a time when I would just take a sharpie and kind of put some on here and smear it on with my finger and have silver fingers for a while. But uh, this rub and buff stuff, I, I think I like it better. You know, it does still come off. A little bit. I'm getting silver fingers now from this. Um, I'm not sure how how many times you need to buff the rub to to make it not do that. But um, you know, it's it's given me a, a pretty good finish. And I went back over and, and redid uh, in black some of the areas that were not supposed to be silver after it bled out over a little bit. So that would give me an ability to do some touch up. So I'm really curious about this product. I, I heard about it from one of the uh, the props groups. Um, and if this is something that'll let me do, uh, you know, especially like rubber guns and rubber knives better than, than uh, paint. So the thing about paint is when it flexes, it cracks. You know, if you spray paint one of those cold steel training knives uh, in rubber and it bends back and forth a few times, it's gonna either peel or crack, it, it's just gonna look like crap. Um, so the nice thing about this stuff is it is flexible and it will move with it. And it does seem to, shine up rather nice. Um, that's, you know, if anything, getting better as I buff it some more. Cue the Margaritaville for that Warren Buffett. I think of the investor Warren Buffett. Anywho. Um, so, you no, know, I'm pretty happy with that. I think that gives me a, a pretty decent looking finish that's, uh, uh, a pretty good double of the other one, but it's it's about as safe as you're going to get. I mean, without getting it too floppy and thick and foamy like the, the LARP weapons. Uh, this is not a LARP weapon. It is rubber, but it is not LARP. It is a, a mid-level. It's not the super hard rubber. It does have some, some bend to it, but it's not cushy. I wouldn't want to get smacked in the face with it. But I would much rather be smacked in the face with this than with this because steel is heavy and pointy and it hurts a lot more, right? 
So this is sort of the, uh, the modern tactical axe of the ones that I've been uh, playing with lately. The other direction I've been going in uh, is... Be right back. Uh, I was playing with more of a, a traditional Viking axe kind of look, a, a bearded axe. Now what I found on eBay was these trainers, these aluminum trainers, uh, collage cutters, I think they're called. And I do kind of wish they hadn't uh, stamped that in the side because that makes it a lot harder <laughs> to hide that. Um, and you know, frankly, they kind of look like crap right now because it's a slab of aluminum. And you can tell it looks like a slab of aluminum that has been cut out in a vaguely axe-like shape. Uh, with a little bit of a uh, twine and tape on the handle. Um, but uh, I wanted to dress it up a little bit, make it look more like a prop. So the first thing that I've done is put some oak slabs on the side. Now you can see this is now a full tang axe, so I don't have to worry as much about swords messing it up or it cracking and the haft going off flying into the audience. Um, so it does have the aluminum all the way through. Um, and I could probably paint over that if I needed to darken it up or something. Uh, but it looks and feels much better now. Frankly, as a, even as a training axe, I really don't like the feel of this. It just feels flat and weird. This feels much more like an axe should. Um, and, uh, you know, at the moment this is epoxied. I haven't pinned this one yet or anything. Um, but this is kind of the, the first step. Um, and I put a little piece up there, too, to kind of make it look a little like it's been assembled. It's, it's not like a real axe. I mean, a real axe, the, the metal would usually go around the wood um, and cinch down from this side. It would be thicker, all that. Um, but again, it's close enough. This is not your phone hero. Um, and then the other thing I've done is I've hammered the aluminum a little bit. I've darkened it a little bit, tried some aluminum back, black, uh, stained the wood, and pinned these as well, as well as a little place for a, a tie or something down at the base. So I think this is probably where I'm going to leave them. Uh, I wondered about adding some of the sort of cross leather, like the the uh, Ragnar Lothbrok axe from uh, the Vikings TV show. Um, but, uh, you know, in thinking about it practically, that's just one more thing to go wrong, and all it takes is one or two wrong hits to break some of that, and then you've got basically like an untied shoelace dangling around off the end of your axe. Uh, and so I'd, I'd have to epoxy the entire length of the thing so that even if part of it broke off, the whole thing wouldn't immediately come undone. It would just have a little bit flopping around. Um, and I know some people, some people like that aesthetic of the, the sort of crossed leather, but, uh, you know, this to me is actually more like a real axe. Plus, I, I like the ability to slide up and down the haft. Um, to be able to, from, from drawing here, to just shift straight to there and back. Right, to have that ability to slide down the haft. Um, I, I like that. I like the flexibility that that gives me in use. Uh, and I like that this kind of bulb on the end here will also give me a nice catch uh, so that as I, as I do slide down, I can do that and not worry about it flying off and breaking my camera, <laughs> for example. Right, but it gives me a, a, an ability to switch back and forth if I wanted to do a, a trap or a catch or a hit or something with, with the, the half here. Um, and then I can come back and slide right to there and have it come back where I, where I want right away, which is kind of nice. So my mental image as I was working on these was, was something kind of like this. And this would be an example of one that's, that's actual steel. Um, but you know, I, I always worry that the, the wood's going to crack and it's going to go flying. It does make it definitely heavier. Um, and it, it rattles around. It doesn't stay flush very well. This one kind of cheated and, and put a little screw in there just to make sure that it wouldn't go flying when I was using it for a, a gig at one point. And it's still down, but that's still that's still going to crack your skull open if that hits with any kind of speed to it. Uh, it's, uh, that, that's going to ruin your day uh, in a way that aluminum will annoy you, <laughs> but it's not probably going to hospitalize you unless you really want it to. This one accidents could happen really easily with that kind of, of weight uh, and mass and solidity behind it. So this is the, the look that I'm kind of going for, uh, but uh, I think these are actually going to be a great option um, for anybody who's, who's wanting more of a, uh, uh, you know, Viking type look, but in something that's going to be a lot safer. Uh, I know for the, for the Viking TV show, they were using, you know, cast rubber heads and things like that. Um, for live theater, sometimes we need something that sounds at least a little bit more metallic, um, especially if you're hitting it into a, a steel shield or something like that. Um, or even just like clanking around on your belt 
Uh, for Aida, I ended up using rings for the swords at the customer's request instead of leather frogs. Um, they're all really digging the shing that it makes when you draw it because movies have conditioned you to think that movie swords, that swords do that when you draw them, which in real life they don't, but whatever. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, there's, there's a number of reasons why we might want uh, aluminum for live theater or, or potentially for film. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty happy with them. And eventually I'll have, uh, eventually I'll have four when I finish these, uh, these other two. Um, and you know, I can make more. The, the company that makes these, they have a couple of these styles. Uh, that are a little bit more, um, you know, tomahawky, not not bearded uh, in front. Um, and you know, I, I might contact them. I think they're based in Michigan, which is not too far from me. And I might ask if they if they'd be willing to consider doing uh, a larger size, um, because I, I think a uh, you know a real Viking war axe. Um, it might be nice to be able to do something that's got a, a little bit more heft to it, and maybe uh, maybe something with a back spike. Or I don't know. I've got some options. But definitely something with a little bit more reach. If I'm going to be going up against a shield, I'd, I'd like to have a little bit more distance between my, my knuckles, my hand, uh, and what I'm hitting with. Um, it just make me a little happier uh, in terms of if I'm doing things like trying to reach over and hook the, the top of that shield from a shield wall and pull an opening to, to break the shield wall or something. Um, just not that much distance between here and here if I'm trying to, to use that bearded end to, to hook anything. So we'll see. But, uh, you know, the other question is whether or not anyone's going to want to use them, whether they actually rent. Uh, and if not, I'll use them for workshops and I'll have fun. But uh, uh, this is ostensibly a business. I'm a crappy businessman. I keep buying toys because I want to play with them, not necessarily because they want to rent out. Um, but, uh, you know, I'll do what I can. And uh, if there's things that folks want, by all means, let me know. So that's my update, a uh, little bit of a, a sort of state of the fight designer address and uh, a little bit on uh, axes, uh, modern tactical style and uh, older Viking style. So uh, let me know if you have any requests. I don't know how often I'm going to be able to do these. I am trying to do the PewTube ones every week. <laughs> I'm trying to get this damn book done. Uh, and come fall, I'm going to be directing a show and doing fights at Cleveland Playhouse for the first time. And it's going to be insane, as well as teaching classes. So. Um, We'll see. But uh, if you got something you're interested in, by all means, let me know and I'll see what I can do. Till then, look good, play safe, have fun. And uh, until next time, this is Kevin Inoue with Fight Designer LLC. Bye-bye.